We have a condominium where um, a unit owner got behind in its common charges. And the problem wasn't so much, wasn't just that he was behind in his common charges, but it was also that it was owned by an entity. And it was an LLC, which is a limited liability company. Um, limited liability companies are made up of members and they are organized under the laws of the state of New York, but there's very little public record as to who makes up an LLC. Um, the reason this was a problem in an in a, uh, arrears case is we didn't know who to serve. We didn't know who the members were of this LLC other than we believed this one guy was the member. Um, and we weren't sure um, we weren't sure how to how to contact the uh, appropriate parties for the 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 LLC. And how this came about was, um, Right after the arrears arose, after several months of negotiating with this unit owner and trying to get payment, the condominium filed a lien. And as, after filing the lien, they handed it over to me and said, you know, foreclose on it. So in starting the foreclosure process, we really ran into some trouble because um, I did a very basic search to determine whether there was a mortgage on the unit. The condominium believed there was no mortgage. I found several mortgages of record placed there by another individual entirely, not by the limited liability company. So we suddenly had this mess as to, to who was the limited liability company. Did they own this unit in reality? Did an individual own it? Um, were there any mortgages that might have priority over our common charge lien? We also discovered taxes hadn't been paid. So there was a mess here and we had no documentation. We didn't even know what state the, li the limited liability company was was um, established in, we had no idea who to serve to in order to collect our common charges. Um, so the, the question becomes not only in this case, how do you collect your common charges, but the bigger issue is how do you protect yourself as a condominium going forward uh, from having this issue arise? In other words, from to find out who the principals are behind an, a limited liability company or any other entity and how do you keep this information up to date? Fortunately, in most bylaws for condominiums, there's a provision that's uh, under the waiver of right of refusal that says you a condominium board can ask for as as much documentation as they reasonably could want to want to ask for. So I have created a list of documents for my client to ask for as part of the waiver package whenever there's a limited liability company or there's any other entity. And that information will include the organ copies of the organizational documents, um, the the name and address of a local agent for the service of process, and the names and contact information for the principals of the entity. Um, and you don't issue the waiver unless you get this information. But there's a bigger issue that can come up and at a different point in representing a condominium and when handling entities. And Al is going to tell you a little more about that. I recently had a situation where a condominium we represented, uh, a unit owner asked to transfer uh, their unit into an LLC. Uh, and actually under the bylaws they had an absolute right to do so because there was no consideration for this transfer so there was no waiver of right of first refusal required uh, and the condominium had no authority to ask for documentation uh, and in this case we even knew that the LLC was a uh, formed in Florida which meant we would have preferred to have uh, a local agent designated for the service process um, but we really didn't have the authority in the condominium documents. So, you know, looking going forward again, uh, the things that you can do, uh, if you've had a purchaser buy in an LLC and you've gotten some of this information initially, uh, you can take the opportunity when you send out your annual lead paint notices, uh, window guard notices, excuse me, either one, um, to ask for that information for updates. Um, if it's a new transfer, really the only thing you can do as a condominium, if you have an existing unit owner that wants to transfer in and they have an absolute right, you've really got to look to modify your condominium bylaws uh, to give the condominium authority to obtain this information. And, and it's, it's just 
it doesn't really harm or prevent the unit owner from doing what they want to do. In this case, the unit owner wanted to do it for estate planning purposes. That's perfectly reasonable. Um, but it's also reasonable for the condominium uh, to have the right to obtain information, as Teresa said, uh, on who are the members, um, notification if there's transfer of a membership interest, because otherwise, theoretically, there could be uh, avoidance of the uh, uh, necessity of obtaining a waiver of right of first refusal. Uh, and you do want, if it's an out-of-state entity, you want someone local designated as an agent for the service of process, which means that if you have to sue this entity, uh, you can sue, uh, serve someone locally instead of having to go to another state to serve them. Um, so this takes some planning and, and a board to uh, consider and adopt an amendment to the bylaws, which generally takes a two-thirds vote. Uh, and is not easy. You have to plan for it in advance and uh, inform your unit owners of uh, just why you're looking to do this and the need to protect the condominium. But it's in everyone's interest to do so.